Uh, and so this morning I want to minister a message called The Role of the Church in These Last Days. And the role of, of the church in the last days. I'm not just talking about us. But I'm talking about all church. I believe God wants to just grab a hold of this is why you're seeing things take place right now. Uh, a lot of things taking place, a lot of revivals, a lot of break loose of God's spirit. Uh, people are responding to the gospel. And, you know, and that's the, the key is that when God begins to do that in these last days, it's not just in a specific revival. It's not just in a specific spot. Revival, when revival breaks through, it's going to happen everywhere. And it's been happening in the last few weeks. It's been happening. And so we have to be prepared for it. We have to be ready to see God move uh, in these days that he wants to move and reach the lost. Amen. Because I tell you, there is a generation that needs Jesus Christ. And we live in a society that we desperately need it. Amen. We need to live in a time where we need God just to, to pour out his spirit and to change lives. There's so much bondages, so much different, uh, uh, you know, maybe back in the 60s, amen, there was the hippie days and, you know, uh, uh, acid, you know, and, uh, uh, all those crazy stuff, you know, um, you know, the drugs, you know, and things like that. But today it's more of an immoral uh, sin. It seems like today there's uh, whatever you want to do, you do, you know, and it seems like, you know, uh, uh, taking place in the, in our society but i believe you know god wants to god wants to place our church in a in a position where god can just begin to do great things and use us to reach the lost to see souls saved to build his kingdom while before he comes back and takes us all home amen praise god so we can god can use us in a mighty way so and i believe that god has has uh, changed the role of the church throughout the years, throughout the centuries, where things have happened through the church world and through the church through century after century after century, persecution after persecution, persecution, revivals after revivals after revivals that we've always seen throughout the years. And I believe God has taken us to a place, and God continue wants to do more and more each uh, each uh, uh, time as time goes on. God continue wants to bring in bring in more people. God wants to do more great things. And that's the heartbeat of God, is to see the church of God begin to understand the purpose of God. And so understand the role that it has uh, to reach those around us. And so that's why it's important to understand that is to, to, as a church, as believers, to say, God, use my life, use me as a tool, as an instrument to reach not only my loved ones, but the, those around me, those are my neighbor, those uh, in my city, those in my at my job, those that uh, uh, that I, you know, even missions and and we sent we find we uh, uh, support the missions that we do and and all these different things because there's so much to do in these last days and so and the church, amen, has been, has has always been a sanctuary, a sanctuary, amen, where the Holy Spirit can dwell in, where the Holy Spirit can move and do it's what it knows what to do at its best, and what the Holy Spirit knows best to do in the lives of people. The uh, the church, amen, has been a tabernacle in the wilderness for those, amen, that are lost and bound and, they're, and they need help, amen. So the church has always been a sanctuary for those that are lost and is a place uh, for those in the wilderness and that God would just bring those individuals home uh, into the house of God where people are looking for the weary, for the lost, and the, for the forsaken. And that's where the church is a sanctuary, a place that people can come and, and find peace and peace of mind, even though we're living in a world that's uh, so much chaotic, so much different problems, so much different uh, uh, assaults upon the home, upon the individuals, upon children, upon marriages. There's so many different things that take place. But the house of God has always been a sanctuary. The house of God should always be a sanctuary for those that are hurting, for those that are, uh, are forsaken, like I said, and those that feel lonely, those that feel weary and lost, amen. And that's regardless of their condition. The, the church is always has to be a place of sanctuary. And so, and even us, amen, that know what it is to be lost and bound, but also realize, amen, that even as God is beginning to do a mighty work in us, that we begin to learn and understand that God is going to draw more individuals in that same way. As we look, amen, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the church world today, but there's opposition. There's op opposition today. There's always going to be opposition when it comes to God moving in the house of God. There's always going to be opposition, whether it be 
uh, from the spirit of this age, amen, out in the world, amen, praise God, but also even the, the spirit of, of, of religion can grab a hold of people, amen, and cause them to, to think out, you know, selfishly or just not want to look outside the, of what God wants to do and say, want to stay, you know, uh, uh, closed up, amen. But I tell you what, it's time that we have to understand, amen, that we're living in a time that we need to find the mind of God, that we need to find the, allow the Holy Spirit to do and to direct us, amen, as God wants to direct us. As the word of God teaches us, where we find the mind of God, we find what God wants for us. As you as an individual, uh, uh, us as, a, as his church, I mean, we have to find the mind of God, that God would lead us and direct us to the, uh, where want, God wants to take us to. And that's why it's important to understand that we find the, our role in these last days as a church. You know, this is why I, I look at it as a, as a blessing for us, because we're a beginning. We're just beginning. You know, we're beginning, we're, we're finding ourselves, we're finding, our, building our foundations of our church, and we're finding a, where God wants to take us and lead us. And this is why it's so important that we, we find that role in each, and each one of us, find our role in the kingdom of God. Because I tell you, we're living in a time that God wants to do so much great things. God says in his word in the book of Zechariah, that a day will come that a fountain shall be opened up in the house of David. And that's in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. It says, in that day, a fountain shall be opened for the house of David for, and for his inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for all uncleanliness. The house, there'll be a time where there's going to be a foundation where people can come, amen, uh, for the inhabitants, amen, and, and come and, and find a restoration and find a uh, deliverance and, and forgiveness. And this is why it's important to understand that. Also, it says in Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 to 9, it says, And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left. And I will bring that one third through the fire. We'll, re we'll refine them as silver as and as as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. And they will call upon my name, and I will answer them and say, "This is my people." And each and each one will say, "This is and the and the Lord is my God." Here we find the scriptures talking about there's going to be a time where where the Lord's going to cut people off, Amen, and say, you know, but that one third that he that retains. That few that he holds on to, amen, is going to be tested. We're going to go through the fire. But as I tell you what, it only does something to us. It only causes us to be stronger in the things of God. God begins to purify us. God begins to, to work in us and, and remove. And God begins to refine us and, and, and to make us into the, the people that God wants us to, to be. See, the church that hungers for holiness is, is in order, it, 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 the church that hung, hungers for holiness is a church amen, that becomes a vessel for God's use. And that's what we want to be. You know, that we live righteous before God, that we also want to understand that, but also we want to be God to use us because, amen, that we desire to do what is right. I'm not, I'm not talking about legalism. I'm not talking about control here. But I'm talking about a deep examination of the heart that we examine ourselves and look at our hearts, amen, and obey the voice of God. Obey the voice of God. We need to learn to hear His voice when He speaks to us. We need to learn to allow God to speak to us so that we hear His voice and He speaks to us. Now, He doesn't just speak to me. He speaks to you too. I know He does. He has to. <laughs> amen. As individuals, amen, God has to speak to us, amen. Well, and this is why it's important to re realize, amen, that God has so much. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, it says, But in a great house there was, all, there was only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some of dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel from, for honor and sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. And here we find, amen, the scripture is talking about the two difference. Amen, if we make ourselves, amen, vessels of honor, God begins to use you and I. This is why it's important to realize that it takes you and I to be humble before God, saying, God, here I am. I don't know nothing. I don't know anything. God, just use me for your glory, for your honor. And God begins to see our humbleness and see the cleanness, the clean, uh, our, the cleanness of our heart. Amen. God begins to say, you know what? I want to use that vessel. I want to use that church because why? They're not trying to become something that they're not. 
And so we see that fountain shall be open in that day. A fountain shall be open in that day. Can you imagine? This is what is, I believe is taking place right now. We're living in a land where it's so dry, where people are looking for something. And in that movie that we saw, people are looking for answers. And this is why people do what they do, right? This is why back in the 60s, they meant, uh, you know, they were doing drugs, uh, acid, and, you know, tripping. They were tripping. <laughs> you know, but, and, but they found, what they were looking for was God. And just like what we did when we were in our sins. Don't look at me like I was in the 60s. <laughs> I was born in the 60s. <laughs> I used to watch these in the new, on, the, on the news. I used to watch, you know, I was just like a six years old, seven years old, watching the, the hippies, you know. <laughs> but we're, you know, we're living in a time where we all were looking for something. We were all desperate for something. And we did what we did because we were looking for God in everything that we did. Whether it be drugs, whether it be sports, whether it be uh, 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 relationships, whether it be a job, money, everything that we're looking for in life, everyone, everyone that is looking for things in life, it's all linked back to God. Because everything that we try, it, it doesn't satisfy. It only may be for a moment, it may be for a time, for a season, but we always end up empty again, looking for, looking for something else. This is why we do what we do. And so, real quick, I want to look at a couple of examples of um, the role of the church in the last days. The first person I want to look at is Noah. Noah, it was an individual, amen, that was called, amen, to do uh, or to build an ark. And we know that Noah was living in a time of great wickedness, amen, a, a time of where society was just doing whatever it pleased, amen, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, 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 a bad aroma to God. It was the sin was just overpowering. It was going crazy. And so we know that, uh, um, uh, you know, what the Lord was going to bring judgment upon the, the land. Amen. And so, but we know that God called Moses or uh, Noah. And he was commissioned to build the ark. And so we know that Moses or, oh, I can't say Moses, Noah uh, <laughs> begins to build the ark. You know, and he knew that, you know what, building the ark was not going to be any, something common. Because what, what is an ark? People are looking at him and saying, you're crazy. You're crazy. What are you doing building an ark? It doesn't, it doesn't ring like that we are talking about. There's no, gonna, there's no such thing as a flood. And it's just almost the message of the church today. The message of the church today is to, is to preach the gospel, the good news for salvation of the lost. And people today reject the loss or the message of the gospel because they don't believe the gospel because they don't believe that Jesus did something great for them to save them. And it was almost the same thing. Here we find even Moses, or my gosh, what am I saying Moses for? Uh, Noah building the ark, you know, hammer after hammer, day after day, day after day, day after day, and still building his ark, still labor for the kingdom. Don't do what God called him to do, regardless of everybody laughing at him, everybody not accepting his message, regardless. I mean, that's how the church is had and has been throughout the years. There's the mission that, and the commission to do the, what God has called us to do. Regardless of the response, when God calls you and I to do something, we have to complete it. Regardless of being accepted or rejected. And this is what happens even through the years. The church has been through many times, many struggles, many difficulties, ups and downs. I'm not, when I say the church, I'm talking about church in general throughout the world. All the churches seem to struggle at times. And there's times when there's breakthroughs. There's times when there's revival. There's times when people are responding. And every church, and you see some churches that are, that are large right now. And, and, uh, and praise God for that. Amen. And you can see some that are small or, or you know, uh, starting off just like we're starting off. But I tell you, there's so much, so much. So much, so much that church has been through through the years. So much persecution, so much uh, assault, amen. But yet, a man or a woman or a family or a church or a congregation, amen, that understands their, their, their calling to do and to labor regardless of the, of the consequences of what the, the retaliation of the world, they will continue to labor and do what God has called them to do. For what? For the lost. Because there will always be those that will respond. There will always be those, amen, that will say yes to Jesus, amen. There will be always those ones, amen, that, that's, uh, that God will call, amen, God will draw into uh, into the kingdom. 
We too, as God's people, have to keep true, amen, uh, as, uh, as uh, Noah did, who has called us, amen, and, and to work and to build. We're building something. We're, all, we're building our own ark. We're building something, not just for us, not just the, so that we can get saved only, right? You know, but we're building this. We're building Regeneration Church. We are all working together, you know, to build a, a church, uh, not just for us. That, yes, we want to save ourselves, praise God. That's what, you know, Moses did it for, or Moses, Noah did it for his, <laughs> for, uh, uh, for his family because he wanted to save his family. But he was also uh, doing it, damn it, built it so big for others that would respond. But, you know, we know the story. But we're doing this for not uh, uh, just for us. We're doing it to me for the world, for the lost in our city. And this is why it's important to understand that we're building, amen. What we're building is something that we know that God has placed us. There's a one, uh, there's one place of salvation. And this is the place, amen, that we have to understand there's only one way to get saved. And that's through Jesus Christ. And that's going to be our message. And that's always going to be our message. That Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And that's why we're building that we're, what we're building. This is why we're here this morning. Because God is going to save and draw in those, amen, that God desires and the Holy Spirit begins to draw by His Spirit. See, but we also know, amen, there's judgment coming. And we know that judgment is coming. And, he, and, and, and Noah, I was going to say Moses, but Noah, <laughs> but Noah knew, amen, that judgment was going to come one day. That the gate or the, the, the door of the ark would soon, would soon be closed. Did you know that, that Moses, oh, there I go, that Noah could not close the gate, the door of the ark? It was too big. That God shut it. You see, when it's God's time, and when it's God's judgment, when it's God's time, when God says it's over, and you know what, and it's over, and you know, that's it, no more, amen. Uh, when he says it's time, it's time. But we have to labor and do all that we can to see those around us to get saved, to get right with God. And this is the message. This is the role that we have uh, to continue on, to begin to build what God has called us to build, and that is to build a, an ark for those around us, a sanctuary for those that they can come and find uh, peace and rest. Hallelujah. See, we were living in a time where the apostle warned Timothy, saying about there's going to be some people, amen, who even the, who believe, but they're going to begin to turn away and turn uh, turn away uh, from the truth. In Second Timothy chapter four, verses one to two, it says, "Now the Spirit expre- now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons." speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Here we see, amen, there's going to be a come a time where, where, you know, you and I have to understand, church, that there's going to come a time, there's going to be opposition to those, amen, they even preach a different gospel. Even those, amen, even that, I understand the lost, I understand the, uh, the, the lost are going to need, to, uh, need the gospel, but I also understand there's going to be those, amen, that once, once, knew the gospel are going to be turned away. They're going to begin to, to hear and to, and to believe a, a false teaching. And this is why it's important to understand why it's so important to get into the Word of God. Why it's so important. To, this is why when we started this church, remember? What was I said? What did I say? That the Word of God is going to be our foundation. This is, we're going to stand on the Word regardless. Regardless of what people say. Regardless of what the, what the other people say. And so, and this is why it's important to understand the Word of God is always going to be important. And, and so, uh, and always stay hold, hold on to the Word of God. Because, amen, there's going to be deceiving spirits. They're going to, it's, it's going to look like the truth. But it's deceiving. And it's, it's sad to see people deceived who once knew the truth. Who once stood for the truth. And allow that deceiving spirit to get a hold of their minds and their hearts where they begin to allow, just because of what a crowd or a people, or just to, to say, I have a, a, a group, you know, that's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Amen. Praise God. So, and this is why we have to understand that even in the least last days, amen, we have to fight the enemy. 
We have to fight against the enemy. Billy Sunday said these words. If you're not meeting the devil head on, then you're going in the same direction. If you're not meeting the devil head on, then you're going the, the same direction as the devil is. And this is why it's important to understand that we have to fight the devil head on. There's nothing to fear. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. There's nothing to fear. When you stand on truth, when you stand on God's word, when you stand for righteousness, when you stand, amen, against uh, uh, all the lies of the, of the world, you know, you know, society and, and uh, uh, all the politicians, they want to make everything, they want to change everything, they want to, uh, you, know, you know, all these different things. You know, the church world once stood righteous, amen, in, the, in, in, in this country at one time. But once, it got, once prayer got removed from schools and the Ten Commandments got removed from courts, when all these different things, amen, started getting removed from the from the courthouses from the governments and all of these prayers and uh, things like that started getting removed from uh, our country this is when it just began to sink a little bit this voice is uh, we have to understand that the second person I want to look at amen is Joseph the story of Joseph Hopefully I won't say Moses. <laughs> Moses or... Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pray for me. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Joseph. Amen. Praise God. He was an individual, amen, with, that had a dream. God gave him vision. God showed him what, how God was going to use him. Joseph was in a place, amen, where, where God was going to do great things through his life. And he was excited. He was so excited that he started telling his dad, his brothers, man, about what God was going to do in his life and, and everything else. And here's, and we know the story that, that uh, oh, there you go. Joseph, amen, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, his family, even his, his own family, his, his own family came against him because of his desires to do what God has called him to do. In Genesis chapter 45, verse 7, it says, For God sent me before you to preserve you a for to preserve you a prosperity. What is what, that word meaning not prosperity, but posterity? That word meaning what is left, just a few on the earth. And to save your lives by a great deliverance. Here, Joseph is talking to his brothers. Telling his brothers what took place was for a reason. In the beginning, even though he was excited about his visions and his dreams, but Joseph understood that God was saved him for a purpose, or not saved him for a purpose, but used him for a purpose to reach those few that were left in the time of drought, of famine. Joseph was used during a time to save those that are few that will respond. It's the same way as Noah, the same message. He knew he didn't understand everything, but yet he did what God called him to do. Even in times, amen, where he was uh, thrown in prison. Even in times, amen, where he didn't understand everything that was taking place in his life. But yet God used him, and God used him mightily even in the prisons. Even wherever he was at, God's favor was upon Joseph. So you have to understand, amen, that when God is with us, God's favor is upon us. Regardless, amen, of what's going on around us. This is why we see God's favor. And I, I sense it. I want to be, I want to be humble before it because I tell you why I see God move and give us favor ever since uh, we started. It's His favor, His grace, His mercy that God has been establishing His, His church. And so we have to give Him all the glory, all the praise. I want to step away so that God can get all the glory because why? Because He's doing it. It's His favor, His grace upon us. And so we have to understand, even though there's going to be obstacles, even though there's going to be, uh, you know, you know, I, I, you know, we all, I have, I, I see us, I, I see us, I, I drive down, even every time we come to church, 
I'm driving, I see all these big buildings, I'm seeing these buildings, I said, I'm, this building is it. We're going to get a building like this. We're going to get, my wife said that, she says that building, I go, that's too small. But then I say, Lord, <laughs> we have to start from somewhere, but I still have, my vision is big. I have a big vision. I, you know, and I, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, you know, praise God. <laughs> So we have to understand that God wants to do more. God wants to do great things. And I know there's going to be, not everything's going to happen like that. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. It's going to take process. It's going to take work. But we have to understand, church, that God is going to use you and I as a tool, as a vessel, to offer His honor and for His glory. Even though sometimes we're going to feel forsaken and we're going to feel just like Joseph did. He felt forsaken. He felt like, you know, why is this happening to me? I'm, uh, God, you know, you want to use my life. But yet at the very end, he understood the purpose. What you meant for evil, God turned around for good. God did not forsake Joseph. While he was in the prison, while things were going wrong in his life, God was there with him. He was used to interpret dreams and visions. He was used, amen, during the great famine. And he was used to save those few in the, when there was no more food. He was able to save his family, his father, his brothers. See, Jesus walked this path as well. Let me get ready to close. Jesus walked down this path as well. He came from the glories of glories of heaven, from the right hand of the Father, but he emptied himself and humbled himself in order to walk among us, in order to walk among the people. He became like man. And yet, amen, uh, he was despised, he was rejected, he was tortured, and he was crucified. For who? For those, amen, he came down for. He was rejected. And this is why it's important to understand that that's the message of Jesus Christ this morning. That's the message that we have. This is the message that we need to keep continuing to preach. That Jesus, amen, did what he did because he loved us and he knows, amen, there's going to be a time for those that are going to have to respond to the gospel. There's going to be a time when it's all going to end. But we have that opportunity to respond now. Amen. Praise God. Uh, revival is breaking out throughout the land. Amen. Praise God for that. People are getting saved. Young people are getting saved. College students are getting saved. Uh, people are turning to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And we know that the final judgment is going to come. And it's coming quick. It's coming quick. But, uh, but you and I have to understand, amen, uh, that Jesus, amen, uh, has been building his church for over uh, 2,000 years, amen, praise God. And he's been building his church, amen, and it's a working process. And God's church, amen, has been scorned, has been hated, has been despised by this world, and even by its own, amen, uh, 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 will still prevail. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against uh, his church. And this is why you and I have to continue to work and labor in these last days. He's raising up a, a church, amen, that's going to stand for the presence of God, that's going to stand for righteousness, that's going to want to see souls saved, that's going to see uh, people changed and delivered. And I tell you what, even in a time when there seems to be drought, we don't see a lot of things happening, but God is, is beginning to do great things now. His presence can be found in the midst of a great drought. Praise God. I tell you what, amen. Uh, even the, that movie, uh, 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 The Jesus Revolution, it's inspiring. Amen. It's inspiring, man. I tell you what. Amen. From a church, amen. The, here this man, had, you know, Chuck Smith, his church only had like a few members. And all of a sudden, amen. I tell you what. Because he allowed the Holy Spirit and allowed God to move in his life. <laughs> and he allowed the hippies to come to church. <laughs> His church grew. His church grew. They were in the front. I remember before I even seen the movie, I remember seeing a, a, 
uh, a documentary on on how uh, how the early church, a lot of the early revivals, and and seeing how they were showing pictures of all the hippies, you know, sitting down, you know, all all, of, and he's there preaching, and they want to just hear the word of God. <laughs> The Word of God is what changes lives. Not getting all emotional. It's the Word. I believe we are called in the, to be part of this church. I believe we are called to, in these last days. I believe this church will be a rock, and it will be a, a solid rock. Amen. And not only that, amen, but it will also rock the foundations of hell. Hey, we're going to be opposed. They was not going to like us. That's all right. No power on earth will be able to, to ignore the spiritual authority of God's church. Satan cannot stand against it. When the, the early church was filled with the Spirit and the Holy Ghost fell upon them, when they waited, amen, when the Holy Spirit fell upon them, man, give them power. Gave them power. Nothing, amen, seemed to stop the church, even the, the persecution of the early church. Amen. When the early church was, was being persecuted, they still stood. They were scattered, but yet they were still preaching the good news. People were still responding. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 6, it says, Day by day they were all with one accord in the temple, breaking bread at home. They took their food with gladness and singleness of heart. That was the early church. Even during times of persecution, they were still pressing on, pressing on, pressing on, still having church. Still doing what God called them to do. They still, amen, understood the importance of do, doing what God has called them to do. There is power in Pentecost, church. We, as a church, need to understand we desperately need the Holy Spirit to move in our services. We need God to, to supernaturally touch our lives. We need God to supernaturally begin to, 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 to change our, our ways of thinking, change our, our old habits into new habits. It's not a matter of joining the church. It's a matter of joining Jesus. Linking up with him. Saying, Lord, here I am. Lord, take me by the arm. Lead me. Change me. Guide me. Transform me. Jesus promises blessings on those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. In, in Matthew 5, 6, it says, they shall be filled. They shall be filled. And, and this morning, as we're getting ready to close, you know, this morning, our hunger should be the things of God. Our role as a church should be the, to do the will of God, to do hunger for the things of God, to reach the lost, to say, God, use me, change me, use me, change me, use me. For the gospel's sake. For the gospel's sake. For the gospel's sake. Change me. Use me. I need to see my, my loved ones saved. My grandma, my grandpa, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my children. I need to see them saved. My coworker, my boss, my, my neighbor. I need to see them saved. Change me so I can do something for you, Lord. Praise God. So let's just bow our heads just for a moment and close our eyes. Hallelujah. You know, the revival is taking place. Revival is taking place throughout the land. I'm excited. I'm excited to see that God, what's going to, God's going to do through all this taking place. I'm even excited to see if, if there's a stirring in the hearts of Christians going to go see this movie that's out there today. Because it's really inspiring. If someone goes with an open heart.
the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God moving, the power of God to change lives, the power to move upon hearts of people. Because God loves the lost. God loves the hurting. God loves the oppressed. God loves the self-righteous. He sent his son to the cross so they can have a way of an escape. So they can find the ark where they can find food when and there's famine in the land. That's the message. And that's what the role of the church should be. But if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you never experienced it yet. You never opened your heart to him yet. You never said, God, come into my life. Come into my life. You never surrendered your heart to him. And this morning, if that's you this morning, I want to pray with you this morning. I want to say a prayer with you this morning by lifting up your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my heart to Christ. I want to surrender this morning. Anyone this morning say, that's me. That's me this morning. I want to get saved. I want to get right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This morning, as we all stand, just for a moment, Praise God. You're not saved. You're not right with God. You want to get saved. You want to get right. You want your surrender to Jesus. It's not too late. It's not too late. The good news, the gospel, the good news is that he loves you. He wants to give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church tonight or this morning, you're here this morning. You know, I tell you, there's so much to do in these days that we're living in. There's so much things happening around us. My heart is that we find the mind of God. We, each and every one of us as individuals, as a church, that we just seek the mind of God, that we find this purpose, that we say, God, here we are. God, do what you need to do in us so that we can reach those around us that we can be that that ark that people can come to that sanctuary where people can come to that we can be that place when there's famine they can find rest peace this morning if god spoke to you this morning i'm gonna open this altar you want to come you can come and pray just between you and god you can